and welcome to this central podcast called A Little Coffee and, and a, a Whole, whole lot, lot of Jesus. Jesus. You got well, you said that weird. <laughs> hey, say Jesus. <laughs> that was, Jesus. It sounded like that. <laughs> I'm not sure where to go. Hey, producer, will you allow it? Do you have some handbills? Do you allow it? She said it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> producer said, all right. I don't know how I feel about that moment. We're going to go back to Jesus here in a minute. Right, right, right way. Now, <laughs> wow. I'm your host, Pastor Michael. Sometimes I don't know if I'm the host or not at this point in time. To my right is Pastor Annette, uh, Pastor Chester, Incredible. and uh, Pastor David, which we're now embarrassed to say is Pastor David this point. <laughs> Executive. <laughs> now, he oh, he's crying. He's dead. He's dead. The show's over. He's crying, y'all. So last week we talked about uh, so we talking about the kingdom and, and you're wearing makeup too. Now we're nervous. And uh, deception. And deception. So last week we were talking about deception and how Jesus said to be not deceived. Right. Correct. This Correct. is kingdom conversation. What does a kingdom look like? How does it sound? What's it walk like? That's what we've been talking about. So this is what we like to call part two. Now I want to say part two of deception. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to that real quick. Matthew 24 and verse four, Jesus said to them, <laughs> take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. So in our last episode, we discussed the word deceive and I'll, I'll rename it real fast. It comes from the Greek word planeo, meaning to cur to cause to roam from safety, from truth or virtue, be seduced, to wander, to be out of the way. All right. Now that we've said that, let's go back into it one more time and talk about this a bit more. I think it's important to point out that what Jesus said was take heed. In other words, deception, my deception is my choice. In other words, All right. Because, well, well, how do you always know you're being deceived? But that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is this. It's my responsibility to not become deceived. It's my responsibility. I can't blame someone else for my deception, even the one who deceived me. Mm -hmm. As as much as I'd like to do that, it's well, it was it was her fault, Lord. What, what did Adam say in the garden? Guilty, not responsible. Right. Adam yeah. said, you know, Lord, I didn't do this. This woman that you gave me. Yeah, that woman. <laughs> That's what he said. That yeah. woman that, <laughs> that you, woman. Lord, that woman that you gave she ain't got me. Got no name no more. <laughs> <laughs> so the deception was he tried to put it onto her. How does that make you feel, baby? Oh, it just makes me feel peachy, warm, and glowing. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, really, I'm come on, yeah. come on, really, and. and the, there is a sin that is known as roaming. I mean, really, whenever you look at mm. the breakdown of this about being deceived, wandering oh. astray, it's noted roam. as the like sin that. to roam. That's losing sight of your focus, getting mm. your eyes off the ultimate prize, which is Jesus. Right. You know, that's an excellent point, because some, to become deceived, mm -hmm. right. you have to let go of some core truths right. you know, that we're right. saying you have to mm -hmm. lose your focus. Let's say it that way. Well, you have to start thinking that, well, let me just say this little verse right here. Galatians six and three. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Mm. And really it comes down to it. We're really nothing without Jesus. So deception yeah. can become, if, let's say one of the steps of deception is personal pride. Oh, mm. without doubt. Oh, yeah. So now, we'll, now because of pride, I'm not prideful. I'm just intellectual. I'm real logic. I'm, I'm logical. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm real skilled in, in this source. I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Come on, really? I was convinced you. You were really good with that. I'm really, yeah. How well you presented. Yeah. I was to say, let, she's yeah. the host. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's she's got me already. That's, that, that's that. That's that cycle. That's yeah. the cycle <laughs> that we all get sucked into, no, and, and right. you have to guard against that. No. So why? So we, so sometimes we blame others for our deception. And we talked about this last episode. You know, those who deceive you have also been deceived. So mm -hmm. how do I forgive those? And, and that's a great point. But also the point being, uh, uh, if I'm going to be deceived, the true the true deception is I allow myself. Mm -hmm. and, which happens when you can think. And I like that you quoted that scripture. I was actually getting ready to throw out First um, Corinthians ten twelve. Let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he falls. Yeah. Um, you know, deception, again, comes off of pride, and we think that we cannot be deceived. Right. There's no way that I am going to, you know, let that curveball get me. There's right. just no way. Mm. And then we become blinded right. to the things that are around us, and we begin to say, you know, I trust in my own understanding. I trust in my own um, uh, analytics, if you will, my own knowledge, my own ability, mm. Mm. and there's nobody going to be able to, to surprise me. And then we blinded ourselves. And next thing we know, we're like, uh, what happened? 
And the whole time in the back of your mind, you're hearing and in your heart, you're hearing a little voice say, ah, uh, don't do this. Yeah. But we shut that yeah. down. We, we, shut we know better. We, yeah. we, know, yeah. we know better. better. We, we know better. Surely. You, if you really think about all the time you've been deceived, there was a moment. A moment. Yeah. And, Even if fleeting. <laughs> and did yeah. you listen to it? Were you seeking God at the time? Were you seeking your pride, like you said? Because most time you get deceived by people feeding that pride to mm-hmm. you. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I like how this feels. Oh, so yeah. Keep rolling with it. Yeah. Yeah. I am that great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I, I brought up 2 Timothy uh, 3.13 through the 14 verse. But evil people and imposters will go from bad to worse as they deceive others and are themselves deceived. Mm. And like we were talking about before, how um it's like it's like a warning mm-hmm. right it's like from bad to worse that means if you get to see you from bad, you from to, bad worse, to worse and yeah. then guess what if i'm yeah. deceived then guess what who else i'm going to deceive other people right mm-hmm. your family right you know your friends right and and he's warning you like being deceived not seeking me but yeah. being deceived you deceive others and just, just how bad is that well you know the scripture talks about it being you know uh, of a man who keeps returning to his sin, now it's seven times worse, or, or the, the amount of demonic oppression now is seven times greater in that situation. So if you keep returning back to your vomit, returning back to that deception, mm-hmm. you usually get further and further deeper into your own deception to the right. point where uh, it's no longer deception for you. And, and you, you start seeing other people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You believe this now. Well, it's procreation of that. Because mm-hmm. if, you, you if you walk... That seed. That seed, yeah. And, and that seed's going to grow. It's going to grow in your life. And then you're going to start seeding that into other lives around you. And before you know it, you know, you're living in deceit, in, in your mindset, in, in the world you've created. And then you're an alien to what God is really calling you to do. You become a cancer. You, right. The, it, you become body. that acid, that cancer that just starts eating away at the truth mm. of God, which mm. had been rooted mm. in you. And it just starts eroding those things. I mean, it's. It's real. It, it's kind of a dichotomy with to believe that you are capable and you are special and you are unique because you are a child of the king. Mm-hmm. You, you have to have that at your core, yeah. but you also have to have that. The more I grow, the less I know mindset. Mm. And so that dichotomy of the the flesh has got to be less and, and the spirit has got to be more. That's so. good. That is a. Uh... Interesting way to put that because that's very true. Because when you go to new levels, you don't know much about the level you're at now. You may have understood the last level enough to to accelerate through that, yeah. but now you're at a new place. And what, there's, there's an old there's an old church phrase: "New levels, new devils." Right? <laughs> uh, that phrase kind of annoys me uh, in many ways, but because I think I think you also have new levels. You, you have new levels of glory too that yeah. God's giving you. I wish it could rhyme better than that, but this is what I'm saying. More money, <laughs> more problems. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right. So th- I think that, but but when you do grow, we're supposed to grow. We're supposed right. to walk in confidence. Glory we're supposed to, glory. to be in glory, glory. Right. And then recognize when I get to that next place, um, uh, maybe I should listen for a little while before I speak. Maybe I should, you know, there are things that have to happen. Yeah. Uh, one that one one of my, this is maybe the wrong way to say this, but I, I'll try this anyway. One of the ways I can judge character is to find out how fast a person speaks in a room where they shouldn't be speaking. In other words, uh, you know, I, I was raised to when you walk in the room, don't be the first one to open your mouth. Nope. You know, it's, especially to other leaders in the room. Very, Listen for a little very wise. Find out what's going on, right? Listen before you speak. But there's always people who want the attention so badly that they expose their own character because they quickly uh, try to take over the room and try to try to try to declare a certain thing. When you're, when you're meeting with leaders or uh, people of that nature, I think it's important that we learn how to be those people that God uses when it's time to open our mouths and speak. Right. We're speaking the word, right. but we're also humble enough to know it's not about us. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the deception comes in, when it, when all of a sudden it's about us. It's almost mm-hmm. taking your eyes off God. You're not seeking him at that time. You're seeking your own pride. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, we, I think everyone seeks on some level validation. Mm-hmm. I know I have. Mm-hmm. I've sought that. I want to be validated in affirmed. ministry, con- affirmed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lift. I think all of us on some level see you don't work your life story to, to and then go, well, you know, you would pray there's more to it than that, right? Yeah. But that's whenever the problem begins to come in, is when you begin to seek 
seek it. Yeah. The validation, because now you want to hear someone tell you, right. you did a good job. Yeah. Right. It's nice to hear. Yeah. But when you start seeking it, now your heart is listening for a sound that will soon deceive you. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a pivotal point. It's almost I like to, when my friends, I, get, I choose my friends very mm-hmm. wisely. And you should. If I hear everything that's good constantly. You know, uh, back in the day when I used to go through issues, this certain issue I had in my back of my head. But if I just hear nothing that, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I got a problem with that. Yeah. I need somebody to tell me I'm wrong. Right. When right. I'm wrong, you know. Yeah. And that's the that voice you're looking for, you know. And some people just, I, I just remember some people just tell you everything. And I see some people just, just gassing people up, you know. Yeah. And those people you really have to be wary of. You know, friendships are are. That's a it's a key part of kingdom relation. You have to have kingdom friendships. Mm-hmm. Friendships outside of that. And when I say friendships, I mean people that can speak into you. Because mm-hmm. uh, you'll receive that word. I I have friends all over the world that I know. Not everyone can speak into right, me. Right. right. But I can be friends and, and be friendly with just about everybody. But when you talk about your close friends, close friends, those that can speak into you, be careful that circle mm-hmm. because Anyone can become deceived in a process. Now you're going to pick the wrong people at some point in time. Yeah. There's no way around that. And even the people you picked that were great are going to make mistakes, right? Because we're human beings. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I've had people in my life tr- try to tell me, I'm just here to be the guy that says no in your life. And I'm like, okay, I, I think you have the wrong understanding. <laughs> right. You know, yes, just like you said, you don't want somebody always saying yes. No. At the same time, you don't want, you don't want somebody always saying no because <laughs> no, will, will, right. they've missed the point. Yeah. How about point. giving some godly counsel? Yeah. And in that godly counsel, you can receive a no. Yeah. But if your purpose in my life Real. is to always say no to me, then you're not really fulfilling a kingdom purpose. You're fulfilling your own purpose right. to me. And so I, that, that's an annoying thing to be. You ever had someone do that to you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I, th- I, I think know. I saw several names flash across the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, sitting here talking about this, you know, the, the thing that just keeps um, resonating in my mind is that you can possibly become that person that aggravates you the most, which is a person who deceives you. Mm-hmm. You know, a person who lies to you, cheats you, uh, you know, steals from you. You can get to that point if you're not careful where you become everything that you dislike. Uh, hmm. hate is a very strong word so I try not to use it too often but that you dislike that you never want to be and how does that happen when you lose the focus when you lose what's supposed to be the main thing chasing after your own ambitions your own dreams your own you know um, and like you said it becomes all about you and to think that you could be that monster mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> that you that you can't stand and mm. that it's within every one of us yeah that's good to not only be deceived but also to be a, a person of deception yeah. Unless we keep things in check, I mean, none of us are above it. No, uh, all no. it takes is you know one wrong decision here, one statement here, and it just begins to start building and building and building. And the next thing you know, it's a snowball effect. It's that being led astray yeah, exactly. back to yeah. what we were yeah. discussing. You know that it is a gradual process. Yeah. It's not like this flash of neon sign. Oh, this is a stray. Go this way. Which which lets you know this yeah. is a continual right. fight every, yeah. every day, day to keep exactly. this flesh under subjection. Exactly. That you one are not deceived, but also that you don't hurt others that you come in contact with. Yes. Because your 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 own will gets in the way of God's will mm-hmm. for your life. You know? you know, I've literally seen people who become so deceived they no longer care who else they deceive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and you can see families being torn apart. Homes being destroyed, ministries affected because people have reached a point of deception where they no longer care who they hurt. Or they just believe. They I've yeah. seen people lie so much that they believe their own lie. Yes. Well, their perception you becomes their truth. You repeat it enough, it becomes the truth. Becomes truth. truth. You repeat a lie enough yeah. times. Try to turn somebody's head. It's okay. From it's that. their truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's your truth. Right. It's, it's, right. No, it's the truth or not the truth. There is only a truth. Question. Yeah. What do you do after you've been deceived? How do you turn? Yeah. Oh, it's an excellent question to ask. I think the answer to that question 
will be found in the next episode. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> we just covered up 15 minutes. And oh, we yeah. try to keep it in that yes, range, right? So I think we start the next. I'm going to let you ask that question first <laughs> in the next episode. Can That's I be a, the host? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be great. All right. So, hey, we love you guys. Download the church app. Make sure you have it. Go to your, go to your app store, Central Triad Church. Easy to get. These are all found on our CTTV portion of our new app and the website. Get those. It's going to be great. Thing. Make sure your notifications are turned on because that way you can be alerted when people yes. send out something new. And stick around for the next episode when Pastor Chester asks the question. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great. Hey, here at Central Triad Church, we transform lives, produce, produce believers, believers, and impact the world. world. We Subscribe, guys. share, like. <laughs>